I embarrassed her when she was here. Oh, no. uh, she was, uh, Sarah was waiting at the airport one night and uh, with several hours before the flight, she hunted for a book at the airport shop and bought a bag of cookies and found a place to sit. The man next to her, as bold as he could, grabbed a cookie or two from the bag between them, which she tried to ignore and avoid this scene. She munched cookies and watched the clock as the gusty cookie thief diminished her stock. Thinking if I wasn't so nice, I'd blacken his eye. With each cookie she took, he took one too. And when only one was left, she wondered what he'd do with a smile on his face. He broke the cookie in two and gave her a half. She snatched it from him and thought, oh brother, this guy has some nerve and he, he's also rude. Why, he didn't even show any gratitude. She had never known when she had been so galled and sighted with relief when a flight was called. She gathered her belongings and headed for the gate, <coughs> refusing to look back at the thieving in grave. She boarded the plane and took a seat. She found her book, and which was almost complete. As she reached uh, in her baggage, she grasped with surprise. As she reached in her baggage, she grasped for surprise. There was her bookie, her bag of cookies, in front of her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> if mine are here, she moaned with despair, then the others were his, and he tried to share. Too late to apologize, she realized with grief that she was the rude one, the ingrate, the thief. So <laughs> don't mention that to Sarah when you see her. But, uh, I thought you ought to know. Uh... <clears throat> By the, by the way, a while back, a Sunday school teacher was discussing the Ten Commandments with a five and six year old. She explained the commandment to honor thy father and thy mother, and she asked, is there any commandment that teaches us how to treat our brothers and sisters? And without missing a beat, a little boy, uh, the oldest of the family, answered, yes. Thou shall not kill. <laughs> so uh, there you go. I'm going to talk a little bit. <clears throat> we'll look here and there and other places, but uh, if we look at <clears throat> Luke uh, chapter 8 and verse 11. <clears throat> Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So we're going to look at the seed, which is the word of God. By the way, nothing grows without seed to begin. And uh, noticed in the bulletin this morning, it, has some things that I think it pertains kind of to this as well that uh, you know the seed uh, even the seed out in the yard or the woods or wherever uh, uh, it's a parable uh, it's, it, you can relate to the seed to the word of God uh, you know without the seed nothing will grow Man will not grow without the word of God, without the seed 
of the Word of God. So uh, uh, we need to be careful along this line. Uh, we're going to, like I say, we're going to look at several verses here. If we go to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11, chapter 1 and verse 11, And we see here, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding the fruit of after its kind, his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. One thing, God is the creator. Never once has man been able to create a seed from nothing. And we might, uh, the schools, uh, unfortunately, uh, they'll teach the, uh, uh, the uh, oh, I can't think of the word right now, but evolution, the theory of evolution, I should say, a theory of evolution in the school, but they will not teach the theory of creation comparable to it in school. You know what that tells me? They believe in evolution, not in creation. Right. The school system today is uh, not what you classify as a godly <coughs> place. Uh, because if they're willing to uh, promote evolution, but not creation, then they're not being truthful. They're not giving you the, uh, the alternative. Uh, and so that makes what they teach for them to be the truth, not creation. And yet we've never seen man once in the, in the, uh, research rooms or the biology labs or ever create something living from something that wasn't. We don't see any rocks that they, they shoot electric rays on it and they put it in the sun and they water it and it brings forth uh, nothing other than the rock itself. So, uh, you know, the seed uh, is uh, created by God. And if we fail to realize that, then we're failing to uh, acknowledge what is, is, is actually out there and the truth. If we're looking at, if we go to uh, Haggai, that's in the Old Testament, and Haggai chapter 2 and verse 19. 2 19. Poses the question Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree have uh, not brought forth from this day will I bless you. But the key verse, or what I want us to look at, is the seed yet in the barn? Is God's word still in the barn? Or will we take it out to the world? That's a question for you and I to answer ourselves. Uh, have we left it in the barn? Guess what? It's not going to grow anything in the barn. Right. But if we take it out and present it to the world, uh, we'll have some fruit. Uh, we don't know how much because that's up to God. The Holy Spirit may speak to the hearts of people that we plant the seeds in, but God has also given man the, the free choice, the free moral choice to choose to receive it or to reject it. And we know that, uh, unfortunately, in the world, Certainly in the United States, Island County, or wherever we're at, uh, there's more rejection.
rejection of the word, of the seed of God, then there is reception. And that's a, a sorry state, but God said, you know, broad would be the way uh, that leads to destruction. And narrow is the way that leads to light, life. And so it is that uh, uh, we have uh, this kind of paradox before us, the rejection of the truth. And we see this more and more. We're seeing, uh, you know, I repeat some of these things, but I just can't get over it that, uh, you know, society is saying this thing of transgenderism and same-sex marriage and all this kind of stuff is okay. And in fact, believe it or not, if you get on the, a talk show or something and call in and you say, this that's an abomination. <laughs> Contrary to the word of God, guess what they'll do? They'll hang up the phone on you. Yep. Uh, so we are actually in a real tough state with the seed, with the the word of God today in America. And you know, I, I think as we reject God's word, that uh, guess what? God will reject the United States. And I believe that is in the process. Yeah. We grew to be one of the strongest countries in the world. And we were blessed that the number of People that we sent out in the world and the Bibles we printed and, uh, but those days are, are over in America uh, I hate to say this and, and uh, maybe you think I'm and maybe I am wrong I, uh, I've said this before you know that's my opinion <clears throat> now we all have opinions and they're like armpits they all stink. Uh, so uh, we got to realize that, you know, my opinion doesn't amount to anything. What does amount to something is God's word. Yeah. And if something goes against God's word, then guess what? That something is wrong. And so uh, we need to keep that in mind <clears throat> as we go along. You know, we need seed. Seed is needed for life. Uh, you know, if we harvest the seeds and we, we eat them all up during the, the year and we don't save some, guess what? We won't have anything to plant for next year. We need to save it and spread it out so that it will grow. Uh, without that, guess what? things will, will continue to, be, to deteriorate. If we, uh, let's go to Leviticus. We'll look at some verses here, but Leviticus uh, 19 and verse 19. Now, this is kind of a parallel, <clears throat> or, uh, but verse 19 says, Ye shall keep my statutes, thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind, thou shalt not sow the, thy fields with mingled seed, neither shall a garment uh, mingle of linen and wool and come upon thee. Now, I believe we can use that in regards to the Word of God in the sense that we want the pure Word of God. Now, we are in the minority within this church uh, because most churches do not use the King James Bible. Uh, they use another version or if they do use the King James Bible, 
they often say, uh, but a better rendering of this verse, when they want to change the meaning or what he really means, what the Bible really means, and they put their thoughts into it. So we're in a minority, but we got to hold on and continue to the end. Uh, I don't know how soon the end is within uh, America, but I think as a great nation, uh, we, we're seeing the ends now. Uh, so we need the pure word of God. We don't need to dilute it, and we don't need to get a better translation. We don't need more meaning. Just use what the Bible tells us as it is now. So we need uh, the pure uh, word of God. In Leviticus uh, 26, 16, we're in the 26, so just a few pages forward, 16. <clears throat> 26.16 I'll also do this say, do this unto you I'll point over you care, consumption and the burning agro that shall consume the eyes because of the sorrow of heart and you shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies will eat it our enemies is destroying the word of God before us the enemies of God uh, you know, one of man's problems is uh, I have the same problem. I, you know, I don't like authority, and yet we need the authority, and we have the authority in the Word of God. You know, we don't need to change it. We don't don't need to give it a better understanding. Uh, we need to keep that Word of God pure. And we do have, and we're going to have to work on it. Uh, it won't stay pure if, if we're not standing up for it. So uh, we need to, and, but, but the enemy is out to destroy the word of God. And you know, uh, we have several enemies. We have the flesh. We have you know, the world itself, and we have the devil, they're all out to destroy the word of God. Why? Because it does not suit them. It doesn't give them liberty uh, uh, where there should be restraint. Uh, so, there again, uh, we need the pure word, but the pure word is the enemy is after it. Uh, while we're uh, in uh, just a page over 20, Le Leviticus 27 and verse 30. And it says, And if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes, he shall add there. Well, let's see. I'm reading 31. Let's look at 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's and is holy unto the Lord. You know, everything we got, whether it's uh, sunshine out there uh, that uh, we so much enjoy, or the rainfall that brings the grass uh, up, that is from God. And so, uh, you know, we, we can't add anything to the sun. We might have a little greenhouse in our house or something that has some lights, but that, that's virtually nothing. So we, we need to realize that the God is in control. Uh, always think about the very first verse in the Bible, God created the heavens and the earth. You know, the creator is in control. 
Uh, we might think that we have something to do with it, but we really have very, very, very little to do with it. So uh, God is in control, and when he is in control, things will go right, yeah. will go correctly. You know, man has a tendency to foul up anything he gets his hands on. But God never is, is never wrong. He's always right. And it's always the right thing to do when you stand with the Lord. So uh, uh, people will, like I say, the schools will teach evolution. They won't teach creation. Uh, uh, that's uh, because they don't want to be under authority of a creator sustaining God. They want to be in control. And man, like I say, at man's heart, man's heart is deceitful and desperately ripped wicked. Who can know? And you know, that that's so true. Uh, even as you know, a saved individual, a lot of times I want to be right when I'm wrong. And so, uh, you know, we've got to be very careful. We've got to come before the Lord, confess these faults and, and have him cleanse us and make us his righteousness that we can't make on our own. And numbers, if we kind of continue in, in numbers uh, 20 and verse 5, 20 and 5, we see that God, his word says, And wherefore have you made us to come out of Egypt to bring us unto a, this evil place? Is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. You know, man always murmurs. They weren't happy in Egypt. They come out into the wilderness, and now they're blaming God again. And so, you know, it's man's <coughs> nature, and unfortunately, man's nature is never correct when it contradicts God's word. It never is. You know, we may think we're smart and right, but we we need to uh, expect God to give us our needs, not our wants. And so often those two things are different. What we need maybe is not what we want. And uh, so we, we need to always put God's idea first, his will and his way, and our second. <clears throat> uh, in Deuteronomy, we're in kind of going book by book here, Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 10. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 10. And it says, For the land, whither thou goest to uh, possess it, is not as the land of Egypt from whence ye came out, where thou sowest thy seed and watered it, it with thy foot as a garden of earth. You know, we've got to do our part if we want a good, good crop. Uh, I, I don't know that I'll say it, but a uh, rusty hoe and uh, clean knees have never raised a good crop yet. We, we've got to do our part. God has put us into here, and so often we expect God to uh, pour out the blessings on us, when we won't even pour out our any work on our own. Yeah. God uh, 
will do his part always. But man won't do his part always. And so uh, we've got to be very, very careful along this line because we get we get kind of crazy. Uh, we got to put some effort into God's will. Verse, uh, that's why we're in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 and 38, 28, 38. And we read here again. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shall, shall gather but little, for the locusts shall consume it. That was Israel's problem because they went the wrong way. And guess what? It will be our problem also. And I think we can see this in America today. America was without doubt the greatest country I believe that the world had ever seen. Because we started out uh, walking with God and being led by God. And guess what? We've left that behind. That made us strong. And yet we, we've gone in a different direction. The seeds that we plant, uh, we don't plant where God would have us to plant. Uh, we, uh, we just go the wrong way. And, and America... Uh, I think, and I, I'm not saying this because I want America. I, I want America. You know, I, I'm raised, and I believe I saw some of the greatest times in America. And I don't want America to fail. I, I really don't. I, you know, maybe sometimes you think, and obviously I don't think I probably say things correctly a lot of times, but. I don't want America to fail. Right. I, I want it. You know, when I was growing up, we didn't lock the doors Amen. at the house. <clears throat> now, not only did we lock them, we barred them. Yeah. You know, and we have these alarm systems and we have all these things. Why? Man, not getting better. America is not getting better. Um, but uh, the whole key at this point in time, what do we do with it? What do we do? We've got to do our part. Now, will, will this little group change the world? Will it change America? Will it change Highland County? I don't know. But I know one thing. We don't want to just sit around. We want to hold fast to God's seed and plant it wherever we can. All we can do is what we can do. The rest is in God's hand. Yeah. So, uh, may I say for sure that uh, God is good and man is not. Uh, so we need to go God's way. And you know what? God sent his only begotten son down here. Why? That we might have life and have it everlasting. That we might know the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh to the Father but by him. So we need to share these messages. We need to be true to that message yourself. Let's face it. Uh, a lot of times the world looks at us, and believe it or not, I, I looks at us, those who call themselves Christian, and hope we fail. Because then they can point and say, see, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to read my Bible. I don't have to do anything. I'm just as good as that person. Folks, we're in a struggle. I admit that. Uh, but 
guess what? God is on our side, or at least we're on his side if, if we're struggling with the seed, the word of God, and live by ourselves uh, and present it to others. That's a challenge. Uh, like I say, uh, this little church will probably not turn the world over, but guess what? We need to do what we need to do do it and everything else will be according to God's will so uh, maybe we bow our head just a moment <clears throat>